There is no condemnation for those of them which are in Christ Jesus. We want you to be in Christ, not out of Christ. We want you to understand he's the savior, the redeemer of our past, present, and future transgressions. In Christ Jesus, we the ones that love the whole Lord to our past and condemn ourselves, even though Christ is again. I'm, I'm speaking for myself now. How often do we sit there and try to hold on to shortfalls? Hold on to be convicted of shortfalls. How many of them do that? Why do we do that? Why can't we just receive the gift of righteousness, the gift of salvation, the forgiveness of our sin and to forgive. See, but you know the problem is some of us, see, we don't, we don't want to forgive other people. You know, and, and what the scripture said, God said that if you can't forgive me and I can't forgive you either. If you can't forgive somebody else, how can I forgive you? Why should I forgive you? You can't forgive. You you just as uh, may have some transgression like anybody else. Why should I forgive you if you don't forgive somebody else? Everybody, God bless you. You know, I just, we just had a good uh, Sunday session uh, talking about the woman caught in an act of adultery. And, and the whole purpose that we were looking at was that Christ, who was without sin, was able to forgive and not accuse that woman, not cast a stone, and just gave her the good word of advice. Don't go sin anymore. <laughs> but what we're tracking on was that people had the audacity to uh, want to cast the first stone, or wanted to cast a stone, excuse me, wanted to condemn the person anyway, right? They, they wanted to do that because they felt it was important. They were had the righteous indignation to condemn that woman because they thought it was the right thing to do. And what I'm sitting there saying is that is it as important for us to do and follow what Christ did? Christ sat there. Christ showed people that it's the mercy of God. Christ showed that all of us, he showed us that he who is our sin has had more mercy that he who sit there half sin and was willing to go ahead and give somebody a hard time, right? That's what that's what happened. He without sin, let him cast the first stone. Is what we read in the scriptures in Romans eight. That's what we was at. Uh, so now we're going to go into uh, the scriptures again and 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 and, and just add on more to it. I was so. I, once again, welcome back. And because this is a new live session, and I was, I did it. You know what I did was I was sitting there trying to see what the, uh, how I can be, because I was trying to show you know how to do the live session and it's long. So I tried to sh shorten them down. And then I wanted to see if it's almost like editing live, right? <laughs> so that's what I just did. And uh, we want to go ahead and get into uh, the Word of God again. And, 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 and just focus, focus on the truth, focus on the, on the power of God, man, for our lives. And, and let's not be accusers of the brethren. Let us learn to, to, to be able to love one another instead of condemning one another. Let us stop trying to be so that we got, we got it going on, that we have the right to accuse somebody else. When we're guilty ourselves. That's what we just did when they were on uh, John uh, dealing with the, the woman called her an act of adultery. 
And then we're going to pick up on the uh, next session. But I do want to I'll, I'll at least start off with this scripture. He said, when, when Jesus, this is a woman, woman caught in an act of adultery, found in John 8, verse 10, and when Jesus lifted, lifted up himself and saw that none but the woman, he said unto her, woman, where are thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? Look at that. Has, has no man condemned thee? After he got them all to be convicted by their own conscience. And maybe we need to, if you don't have a conscience, maybe you need to have one. She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn thee. And I have not sinned. I have fulfilled the law, but I'm not going to condemn thee. But take the sound of advice, go and sin no more. See, he was definitely going to sit there and say, that's not what I want you to do. I need you to not sin anymore for, for your own sake. Because look, you can get in trouble. <laughs> you, you, if you don't, if you don't watch out what you're doing, <laughs> if you keep sinning, you know the way to sin is death. Christ was giving her sound advice, but you know the difference was he wasn't trying to kill her, he wasn't trying to condemn her. But yet, somewhere along the line, believers have gotten back to this this idea that we're supposed to be law enforcers condemning somebody else. The subject today that I have is dealing with the fact is the, the lawsuit against believers. Us turning to hoping in the law instead of hoping in the power of God to our fellow believers. We, that, that's what we're talking about. The fact is that we try to get be in, show indignation and try to get back to uh, using the law as our means of trying to get people to do the right thing. When we sit there and guilt ourselves, we, by fact, we're not trying to get people to do the right thing. We're trying to convict them and cast stones at them and in some form of fashion kill them. That's what it seemed like we, we want to do. We, we want to not show compassion. Christ showed compassion with that woman caught in act of adultery. How many people you see today that try to give compassion? He wasn't yelling at her. You know, that was one of the Ten Commandments, right? Thou shalt not commit adultery. He wasn't yelling at her. He wasn't trying to convict her. He wasn't trying to put her down. He wasn't ready to pick up a stone and go after her. And then he made sure everybody else who said they didn't want to do that, didn't want to show mercy, didn't want to show grace, look at your own selves. And each of them was convicted by the conscience, their own conscience, and moved on and left. That's the whole point. Maybe that's what we need to learn to follow Christ, his will, right? Let his will be done. Instead of us sitting there trying to be law enforcers and guilty yourself. You know, I like that one, that one scripture where it's talking about how you gonna try to try to moat, get a moat out of your brother's eye when you got this beam in your own eye, right? <laughs> That's true. That's what's happening, right? That's what we end up doing. We love to sit there and look at somebody else moat, somebody else shortfalls, and don't recognize we got on beam. Sticking out all eye. And then act like people don't see it. And people do. So we need to work on that. And that's what we're talking about. So happy 4th of July. And I hope you get the chance to go and, and worship with fellowship with other believers. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a, another session real quick. And then we're going to try to sit there and enjoy ourselves for the rest of the weekend. Amen. So let's go ahead. And look at the uh, next set of slides that I have up here and give it a shot, give it a shot, listen to it. Let the scriptures work for itself. This one is in Romans chapter eight. You know, I love this one. They call it in verse one. He said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, believers, listen, listen. There is no condemnation for those or them which are in Christ Jesus. We want you to be in Christ, not out of Christ. We want you to understand he's the savior, the redeemer of our past, present, and future transgressions. In Christ Jesus, we the ones that love to hold on to our past and condemn ourselves, even though Christ is again. I'm, I'm speaking for myself now. How often do we sit there and try to hold on to shortfalls, hold on to be convicted of shortfalls? How many of us do that? Why do we do that? Why can't we just receive the gift of righteousness, the gift of salvation, the forgiveness of our sin, and to forgive? See, but you know the problem is some of us, see, we don't, we don't want to forgive other people. You know, and, and what the scripture said, God said that if you can't forgive me, and I can't forgive you either. If you can't forgive somebody else, how can I forgive you? Why should I forgive you? You can't forgive. You, you just as um, may have some transgression like anybody else. Why should I forgive you if you don't forgive somebody else? When, when do we get to the point where we think it's so important that we don't want to forgive somebody else? We want to throw the stone at somebody else. We don't want to give grace to somebody else, and yet we receive grace. We receive forgiveness. How many of you do that? How many of you allow yourself to bypass the grace and the mercy and the gift and passion that you receive, but don't want to give to somebody else. How many of you do that? How many of you do that? How many you walk in condemnation yourself because you sit there and can't receive God's grace, God's forgiveness? I, you know, you know <laughs> at least for me, that's important to realize. Stop holding on to your wrong that you have done. If you're not practicing it, what, and he's forgiven you, then it's forgiven. Move on. And if you do have issues, work, let him work with you. Let him cleanse you. Instead of you sitting there saying, oh, oh let me, let me, let, let me, when will it stop? When will you receive the gift of salvation? When will you receive forgiveness? And when will you start giving forgiveness? When are you going to start loving somebody else despite their shortfalls? When are you going to do that? Why would you do that? What, what value is it? Why who would an exchange them lose their own soul? Because we want to uh, get somebody else in the flesh. That's what seem to be the case, right? What, 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 somebody else conviction, how does that help you? Here should be the topic on that one. How does it help you to have conviction and condemnation or what if somebody else to feel condemned? How does that help you? Because that's what some people do, right? What value is it to condemn somebody else what are you getting out of it? How is it benefiting you? How should it benefit you? Well, I, I like the scripture there. It's like there's no condemnation for those who walk in Christ. So be in Christ so you don't walk in condemnation. Just for me, well, if you don't agree, I'm taking it. Because the, it's a, if not, I accumulate all my shortfalls. And then I condemn myself for it. And how many of you condemn yourself for it? How many? How many of us condemn ourselves for mistakes that we made? Not recognize that everybody else did some kind, some transgression, maybe not the same thing. 
but have done something. How many? I think that's something to look at. Now look at the rest of the part of the scripture. It says here in John, I mean Romans 8, verse 1. He said, who walk not after the flesh. This is verse 1. Because we already said that there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. He said, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Meaning I'm not walking after the flesh, being led by the flesh, but being led by the spirit. Looking at spiritual principles, the mercy and the grace, the love and the compassion. What about those things? Aren't they not important? Are they not important? He said, for look, for the law of the spirit and life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Whoa, man, listen to this now. Did, did you not catch that? It has made me free. It has made you free from the law of sin and death. Life in Christ Jesus, Yeshua, has made me free has made us free from the law of sin and death. I'm free from the law of sin and death. Therefore, why would you condemn somebody else for the law of sin and death when you don't walk in the law of sin and death? Think about that. Why would you? What's the point of sin? What, what's the point of condemning anybody else? If you've been made free, from the law of sin and death. Why would you want to put somebody else on the law of sin and death? And why would you want to execute the law of sin and death on somebody else, your fellow brother, when you know, we just read in, in John, the woman, they, the people walked away because they convicted because they all have sinned, right? And you have all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You, even as one of you, I know you was to sit there and, sit, and you got some preachers sit there and so what, I'm going to hold you. I'm going to hold the banner. I'm going to raise the standard. And yet, he's guilty or she's guilty of violating something. Calling Christ and made it right. But we'll do that. Then we go, let me go ahead and bring somebody else on the law of sin and death. Instead of having that peace that comes from being in Christ. Christ has made me, Christ has made you free from the law of sin and death. Listen to people, Christ has made us free from the law of sin and death. So we're not going to, see, look, when you sit there trying to put somebody else under the law of sin and death, you put yourself under it too. Did you catch that? <laughs> when you put somebody else under the law of sin and death and you become the executioner of it, either by mental or by deeds or actions, you put yourself on it as well. But how can, how can you execute it? If you're free from the law of sin and death, you can't. How can you execute on somebody else? That means you have to be in the law of sin and death to execute the law of sin and death. Because if you're free from the law of sin and death, that means you're free and anybody who comes around you is free because that's not how you live. That's not how you apply things. We are free. I'm free from the loss of the devil. I know it's important to me. And I know it's important to you. But if you go over and try to convict somebody else of the loss of the devil, you're not a police officer, right? I ain't talking about this. I ain't talking about the world police officer. I'm talking about God. You're not, uh, you remember you have been called by God to enforce God's laws, have you? Has anybody? Let us know. I mean, who, who? Who? Christ has made us free because of you in the law of sin and death. You're not, if you if you're not, if you executed the law of sin and death, then you're not, you're under that too. You have to be. How can you, how can, <laughs> well, anyway, I, I'm just telling you, 
Christ has made me free from the loss and the death. Christ has made you free from the loss and the death. Make it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.